Hello and welcome to this Astranti YouTube video on the accounting rate of return. This is another investment appraisal video following on from the one on internal rate of return that I recorded earlier. And if you like this video and you want to see more of them, then please like and subscribe at the bottom of the screen or visit the website www.astranti.com. There'll be many more free samples and also more information about the products that we produce here. And this is one of many videos that we are producing about various different things. There'll be some on technical topics, there'll be some on exam technique, some specific to the objective test exams, the case study exams, the various different pre-seen companies that you need to analyze, etc. So again, do like the video if you want to see more videos like that. And with this one, unlike the internal rate of return, which is quite difficult, the accounting rate of return is quite a simple method. And it's very easy for people to understand and it accounts for all cash flows and also the residual value. So it does actually include quite a few things whilst also being very simple for someone to produce and very simple for someone to understand because it's a percentage based return. So people can understand that regardless of the level of financial training. They know that one percentage return is higher than another percentage return and it's probably a better project. But where the account return, return can fall down is that it does not consider the time value of money. And we know that the time value of money is very, very important as accounting students. And that's a big letdown with regard to the accounting rate of return as an investment appraisal technique. And this is the formula for the accounting rate of return. It's the average annual profit divided by the average value of investment. And that sounds quite simple. But these two are, in a sense, also the result of other formulas. So we actually have to do a few calculations before we can even return to this particular formula. So let's look at an example to demonstrate this. We have a project here, and the initial investment of that project is going to be £240,000. The annual cash flow is £60,000 every year for five years. That's the length of the project. And the investment, whatever is being purchased for this project, is depreciated on a straight line basis. So that's the same amount every year. This, of course, being different to a reducing balance, which is based on a percentage. And the residual value of this project, once it's finished at the end of those five years, is £40,000. So to start by calculating the average annual profit, and the average annual profit is calculated by taking the average annual cash flow and deducting the annual depreciation. Now, we have the average annual cash flow in the example. It's £60,000. It's 60000 in revenue per year. That is our average annual cash flow. Now, for the annual depreciation, we don't actually have it this time. We've been told that there is depreciation and that it is on a straight line basis, but we haven't been given the actual annual figure. But what we have been told is the initial investment, how much we're initially going to pay and also how much will be left over in residual value. So we can calculate the annual depreciation by taking those two figures deducting the residual value from the initial investment and dividing it by the life of the project in years. So we have our initial investment, that's £240,000. We deduct 40000 in residual value, leaving us 200000 which we divide by five, as that's the length of the project. And that gives us an annual depreciation charge of £40,000. And that works out because it's a depreciation on a straight line basis, so it's the same amount each year. And now we can calculate our average annual profit by taking our average annual cash flow of 60,000 and deducting our annual depreciation of 40,000. And that gives us 20,000 pounds as our average annual profit. So when we return to our main formula, we now know our average annual profit is 20,000 pounds. And to work out the average value of investment, we use this formula here. The initial investment plus the residual value divided by two. And again, we have these figures in the table, which is now on the left-hand side of the screen. 240, 
for the initial investment and 40,000 in residual value. So we have 240 plus 40,000 equals 280,000 divided by two gives us an average value of investment of 140,000 pounds. Again, return to the main formula, we now have 20,000 divided by 140,000, and that gives us 0 0.1429, and round that up to one decimal place is a 14.3% return. So for every pound that we invest in this project, we'll see a 14.3% return. So 14.3 pence back from every one pound we invest. So sounds like a good idea. So as you can see, the accounting rate return, quite simple to calculate, not using any discount factors or any routing as we use in the modified rate of return, etc. It's very straightforward, very simple, and a very clear result. We know that for every pound we invest, we will see a 14.3% return. But the problem here, again, is that it doesn't take into account the time value of money, and that really does perhaps leave it wanting in regard to its use as a, an investment appraisal technique. But I hope you do now know at least how to calculate the accounting rate of return. It is a very important formula that you do need to know for your exams, particularly your P2 exam, as it is part of the syllabus. And so you will see questions like this in your exam. So if you do like this video and you do want to see more, then again, please do like and subscribe at the bottom of your screen and visit the website www.astranzi.com for even more of our P2 samples and also various different samples from all other modules within the SEMA syllabus. So thank you very much for watching and I hope to provide you with more videos like this in the future very soon.